Hey, everybody, welcome back to the podcast, Becoming Resilient, where we believe that resilience is developed as you go through one experience at a time. It's a muscle that you develop. And so at this, at the time of this recording, it is the beginning of February. A lot of activity is about to take place, and I am excited about one particular um, event that is happening that I want to share with you. Uh, February is very popularly known, well known as Black History Month, where we celebrate all things where Black people have made contributions in some form or another. And I want to talk about a Canadian woman who is making a contribution in the area of cancer, specifically breast cancer. It is also um, the month where World Cancer Day will be acknowledged. Um, In this episode, I want to shed some light, as I said, around an issue that we are advocating for um, to push the age of testing for breast cancer screening at a lower age. As you may remember, if you've been following me for any length of time, I was not 50 years old when I was initially diagnosed. Um, As a matter of fact, I was not 48 either. I was very young. I was active with two young children, Mary. And when I took public transit, um, when I saw posters in buildings that spoke about getting testing and screening and um, breast cancer, uh, the people on these billboards did not look like me. They were primarily Caucasian. They might have been Chinese or Oriental women, but they clearly were not in the age bracket of under 50. They were actually between 50, 55 towards the 60 age group. So they were not 20, they were not 30, but they appeared on these promotional um, uh, events, things. And so they didn't look like me, as I said, I was 38 years old. That's right. I was 38 years old when I was initially diagnosed. I was black from a West Indian descent. I did not see me. So why would I think of checking myself, much less educating myself on breast cancer? Until the day my mother told me she found a lump in her breast. Until the day my mother was diagnosed and until the day Six months after my mother's surgery, would I consider checking my body where I too found a lump? If you are a black woman or you are from an African or Caribbean descent, if you are South Asian and have breast cancer in your family history, and even if you do not, because at the time of my diagnosis, I was unaware of it being in my family history. I want to encourage you on the first or on the first week of the month, check yourself, lie down on the floor, raise your hands one at a time, your arms one at a time, take your ring and middle finger and slowly move down your arms and around your breast, moving into your chest cavity in a circle, moving into your chest cavity, check to see if you feel any abnormalities. Look at yourself in the mirror. Has your skin changed? Does has the does the texture feel different? Anything that seems out of the ordinary from maybe the month before or weeks before. Look at yourself and do this check. I am speaking to black women, but I'm actually speaking to all women and that also includes men. Check yourself the first week. This is I'm arming you with tools and arming you with information so that you can be proactive, so that you can advocate for yourself. I have just learned, the reason being is I've just learned that my family doctor will no longer be practicing. Um, He will no longer be my, my initial practitioner here in Canada. Did I receive a phone call? No. Did I receive an email? No. Did I receive a text message? No. I found out secondhand from another friend who also has uh, my doctor as a medical practitioner, that I have 45 days to access my files with payment because he will no longer be practicing medicine. He's going off in another 
health direction. What does this mean? This means, again, that we have to take charge in advocating for ourselves. So now I'm on the lookout for a new family doctor for my family. This is the state of our health care system in Canada. We are losing doctors X, Y, Z, and I can go on that. But as a woman of faith, I know I will get what I need when I need it. I am going to be looking and praying. And if you have a referral, you can let me know here in Ontario. I'm not worried because the creator of this body has been keeping this body and will continue to keep me. So I'm going to rest in that, but I want to arm you with the fact that you might one day find out that your clinician, your practitioner that you have had for all these years may not be there. Even if you did have a family doctor, your family doctor did not take the time to study a whole lot in nutrition and so forth. You need to advocate. Nobody's calling you in to have your pap smear anymore. Nobody's going to be calling you in to ask if you have had your mammogram or if you plan on going for it. You've got to take charge. And so I want to encourage everybody at the sound of my voice to do that. Okay. So I did not see me, as I said, um, in these, um, in these brochures or even in these, um, billboards that were promoting the wellness of women around breast cancer. But I am thankful that at the time of my diagnosis, that I was looking at how I could better my health. And so this was part of it. So to the juicy part in this episode, I want to let you know that on Saturday, February the 4th, you might hear this afterwards, but guess what? You can still participate. On Saturday, September the 4th, um, there will be an event at Scarborough Town Center where you can be get in on seeing what I'm going to describe to you. There is a petition that is being launched to the Ontario government to lower the rate of testing from age 50 to 40. That's right. We are petitioning the government to lower the age of breast cancer screening from age 50 to 40. There's a petition that if you want to endorse this and encourage this, you can sign this petition. I will put the links below because breast cancer in black women are being, we are being diagnosed at a 40% higher mortality rate, mortality rate than white women. I said it again, black women are being diagnosed with breast cancer. They have a 40% higher mortality rate than white women. And despite this fact, Diagnostic and educational tools often overlook how breast cancer symptoms look and feel on dark skin. So you are invited to join Love and Nudes on World Cancer Day and be one of the first people to experience the Stage Zero Collection. That's right. It's called the Stage Zero Collection. Tactile Breast Cancer Screening Bras for Black Women. So they will be unveiling this new collection and you are invited to join our movement through the signing of our change.org petition. The website to go to is www.change.org slash forward slash stage zero collection. I'll say it again, www.change.org slash stage zero collection. On Saturday, February the 4th, from 11 till 6 p.m. at Scarborough Town Center, uh, Shop 2-0 is where you're going to be able to meet the founder and CEO of Love and Nudes. Her name is Chantal Carter, and you're going to be able to um, get um, a viewing and touching and feeling what these inserts look like. You can check my stories, and you will be able to get a picture of what they look like and what the, the, the idea, the goal is to get these into a place where women shop and are visible, maybe in doctor's offices, where they can see and feel what a tumor may look like or feel like. And this is why I said to you, it's important to check your breasts and also look at yourself in your mirror and see, have there been any changes in your skin, in your discoloration? So 
we are inviting you to come on board and to sign this petition. And maybe you know of somebody, um, maybe you know of somebody who um, has been challenged um, with breast cancer in their family. Maybe they're looking for information, but education empowers. Education empowers. Remember, cancer does not respect age, gender, race, or religion or faith. It has no respect for you. Every part that we can play to the contribution of getting breast cancer awareness out there is part of the solution. So I want you to join us and be a part of the solution as we all become resilient in the understanding and the awareness of caring and supporting women and men in this disease. If you would like to share this video, share it real quick, share it with somebody who uh, might be wondering how can they support women? How can they support, support the promotion and the education of breast cancer? That would be so greatly appreciated. It's not something to be afraid of, but it is something to be aware of. I'm going to say that again. It is not something to be afraid of, but it is something to be aware of. And when you are aware and when you have information and when you're given tools to be able to identify what is happening in your body and maybe help somebody else identify and pursue getting treatment and pursue getting the situation checked out, it's all for the better. Um, so we just want to leave that with you on today's podcast. I want to thank you for joining me. Thank you in advance for subscribing and thank you in advance for sharing this with someone. If you have been recently diagnosed, just connect with me. I want to send you something, some information um, that will help you just to go through these early days that is transferable to any situation that you're going through in your life. And it's free. Um, it's so you've been diagnosed. It's called, so you've been diagnosed. What next? If that's you, I want to encourage your heart right now. I want to let you know that though you have received the diagnosis, it is not the prognosis of what happens here going forward. I want you to know that you're going to make it. I want you to know that you are going to more than survive. And I want you to know that through this journey, you are becoming resilient through this challenge. Get your journal, document your thoughts, document your notes, and be encouraged because we're going to make it. And I'm here with you in the fight. God bless you. And thank you for joining me today.